Hello, and welcome back for part two of our three-part series on Microsoft Access Relationships. And today, we're going to take on the one-to-many relationship. Now, when we talked about the indeterminate relationship, that just means that two fields from different tables match. But with a one-to-many relationship, you can expand on that and modularly grow data collection in your database as needed. Let's say you're using Excel, and you've got a supplier. And that supplier has five warehouses. And they also open up five district offices, all in different locations. And each one of those district offices has two contacts that you need to keep up with. Now, if you try to accomplish that in Microsoft Excel, that spreadsheet's going to go on forever. And there's a lot of manual data entry, so there's tons of room for mistakes. But by bolting on data collection using a one-to-many relationship, you can really streamline your data collection and avoid those giant spreadsheets that will go on for miles. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to come back and say a quick word on normalization or getting your data ready for a one-to-many relationship. And I'm also going to show a really cool use of that relationship in streamlining data collection for both you and your users. So, in the meantime, let me show you how to use the one-to-many relationship in Microsoft Access Databases. The one-to-many relationship in Microsoft Access is created between two or more tables. And one of those tables, a parent table or master table, should contain a non-repeating field or a unique identifier or keyed field. In our example, and on the left side of the screen, you'll notice that I have two tables. Our first table, the store table, contains information about a retail store. You'll notice that each store has a store number and we'll be using that as our unique identifier or keyed field. But another thing to notice in the table is that the other information, the address, city, state or province and postal code are not things that change uh, about the store. In our second table, we'll be collecting the names of sales associates for that specific store. So in the sales associate table, there could be several associates associated with that store. But the address, city, and state for that store do not change every time that an associate is added. So we'll move to our store table and open the table in design view. In this case, by right-clicking and then choosing Design View. Once the table is open in Design View, you'll notice that the field data type for the store number is a numerical field. Key fields can either be numbers or text. Also, at the bottom, you'll notice that the properties of required and index are set to No. In order to key the field, we can just select the field and then move over to the primary key and click it. This will add a small key to the left of the field name and once again at the bottom the field properties are now changed to required yes and indexed yes with no duplicates. Very important. There are two types of keys that you can use. The first one is a natural key. And a natural key basically has to do with the naturally occurring IDs for the particular item that you're collecting information on. In this case, the store number is a naturally occurring unique item. Other examples would be social security numbers or part numbers. The other type of key that you can use is a surrogate key. And the surrogate key can be accomplished by changing the field to a auto number field. Auto numbers automatically number each entry in the table starting at one. And they are non-repeatable. One thing to keep in mind when using the auto number field though is that at some point you may decide to assign real store numbers and the auto number field cannot be changed. 
So in this case, we'll take the store number as our naturally occurring key and then close the table, saving the changes. And then moving to the sales associate table and opening that in design view. Now, because we'll be connecting the sales associate table to the store table by the store number, we'll need to have that store number in the sales associate table. So we'll add the field. The second table or child table must contain a similar field, but the field is not indexed because as we add sales associates, we'll have several sales associates for each store, meaning that we cannot make the store number unique. So while we'll change the field to a number field, the only rule that we'll have to really be concerned about is that the data type for these two fields is the same. In this case, a number and field property set to long integer. Now that we've changed the sales associate table. We'll go ahead and close it, save the changes, and then move to the database tools ribbon, and then over and down to relationships. Once the relationship window opens, we'll grab the store table and drag it out onto the screen. And then we'll grab the sales associate table and move that also onto the screen and drop it oh, slightly to the right. To create the one-to-many relationship, we just select the store number from the store table, which you'll notice displays the key, and then drag that field to the like table or like field in the associate table. When we do, the program will notify us that we are creating a one-to-many relationship and that we have the option to establish some rules. The first rule we'll set is to enforce referential integrity. What it really means is that you cannot assign a sales associate to a store that has not been established in the store table. Our second rule is to cascade update the related fields. And in short, if you change the store number in the store table, it will change in the child or connected or unkeyed tables. This means that you don't have to open one or more tables and continually change the store number. The third option that we will set is to cascade delete any related records. And that basically means that if we remove a store from the store table, that any sales associates connected to that table will also be removed. Now, a lot of Access users uh, have concerns about that setting. For example, you may not want to lose that sales associate information. Well, one easy way of accomplishing that is by not removing the store from the store table and just marking it as inactive. An easy way to do that is to open the store table in design view and then adding an additional field. Is this store active? And then setting the data type to a yes or no checkbox field. That way, if you're creating queries in the future, you can just ask to see any active stores, meaning that you don't actually have to delete the stores out so that they won't show up on reports or queries. Now that we've established our rules for our one-to-many relationship, when we click the Create button, it now displays the one-to-many relationship line between the two related fields. To see our relationship in action, we'll start by moving to the Store table. So we'll add some employees in the Sales Associate table for store number 21547 in Seattle, Washington. To do that, we'll open the sales associate table, add the name of a sales associate, and then adding a store number of 21547. When we hit the tab button, that associate is now established for that store. 
if we were to create a an associate and provide her with a number that does not already exist in the store table when we tab out we'll receive an error message that the associate cannot be added because there is not a related store in the store table so that is the referential integrity enforcement at work if we return to the store table and we were to delete the store number 21547 we'll receive a message that because of the cascading deletes we are about to lose this record and any related records in the associate table and then lastly if we change store 21547 to store 11547 when we go to the sales associate table that store number has now changed that is the cascading updates to the related fields at work we can now add several more associates to our associate table and because we've used the one store to many associates uh, relationship we're now able to see those sales associates in all queries and on any reports that we might create. So that's a quick overview of the one to many relationship in Microsoft Access. Now I mentioned that I say a word about normalization and there's a ton of stuff written on it. But if you just think of it as like types of data with a common field, I think you'll find it helpful in trying to decide how to break up the data for your one to many relationship. Now, I also mentioned that I had a kind of a cool trick that works really well with the one to many relationship and it involves data entry and subform. So, to create a form and subform, you're really just using the one to many relationship and creating two forms, a columnar form for the data in your main table and then a data sheet form for the information in your child or secondary table. In design view of the columnar or main or parent form, you can just take your data sheet form and drag it in. Then the one to many relationship kicks in and you now have an efficient method of data entry that lets you or your users enter data into both tables if necessary. I hope you found this information helpful and until the next video where we'll talk about the one to one relationship. Thanks for joining me and I'm Wayne.